Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Dan Landing, the Oregon Ducks continue to roll in the transfer portal, landing another commitment. This one coming from former Duke cornerback Brandon Johnson. And I want to get out in front of what I've seen on Twitter and on the message board saying that this means that Oregon is out for Jabbar Muhammad. One, Brandon Johnson, been a fan of his game since the 2022 year, has been a guy that kind of a stalwart nickelback for Duke the last two years. And as it relates to Jabbar Muhammad, they play two different positions. Right, you take a look at Brandon Johnson, 496 snaps as that nickel roll, 99 in the box, 78 on the defensive line, and then 35 as a free safety. He only played 30 snaps as a boundary cornerback in 2023. So in terms of Jabbar Muhammad and this hurting Oregon's chances to get a guy like that, I don't think it really does. And Jabbar Muhammad's a quality of player that is not necessarily scared of competition in that cornerback room. Wherever he goes, he's going to face competition, right? Considering Alabama, considering Texas. I don't think this necessarily squeezes out or scares a, a guy like Jabbar Muhammad off. And more importantly, just two kind of guys that play different positions. And the second thing that pops into my mind, and this is kind of what gets me really excited about a guy like Brandon Johnson and more about what Dan Landing is doing with this Oregon program. This is Kirby smart ask in terms of enough depth and competition in a position room, it's never enough. Like We're talking about this Oregon secondary being an elite group in 2024 before a guy like Brandon Johnson even committed, right? Grabbing Kobe Savage from the portal, Cam Alexander. You have Jaleel Florence, Dante Manning, Nico Reed coming back. I mean, this was already a cornerback room that was loaded heading into the 2024 year. And I think Dan Lanning looks at it and says, it's never enough competition to have in this room. And if we like a player, we're going to bring them in and kind of increase that competition. Brandon Johnson, Tashim Johnson, really going to battle it out for that nickel role for the Oregon Ducks in 2024. And if you're Oregon, I mean, that's a good problem to have. These are two very good nickelbacks that can do a lot of different things and a position that I think is significantly underappreciated in modern college football. When you have the ability to match all the speed that teams want to play with, even in the Big Ten, dealing with teams like Ohio State, but also have the ability to stop the run. Like That is a massive part of playing defense in this era of college football, and a good nickelback allows you to do that. Brandon Johnson, Tasheem Johnson, both two guys that are phenomenal in coverage, but also are not afraid to get their noses dirty in the run game as well. I'm a big fan of this. Again, when you, when you talk about just continuing – to upgrade this Oregon roster. That is what Dan Landing is doing, right? It's never enough competition depth to have. Very, res It kind of resembles Kirby Smart's mentality in terms of how he wants to go and build a roster. Want to get into Brandon Johnson. Talk a little bit about what this secondary is going to look like for the Oregon Ducks. Before we do, just want to say thank you to you guys and, and a special shout out to the Oregon Duck fans. I mean, this is a program that has been a blast to talk about throughout the duration of this transfer portal, breaking down all these commitments. I personally love doing this. The amount of support you guys show, it really does mean a lot. So if you all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. We just released our 2024 season preview for that offensive line. So go check that out as well. I'll link it at the end of this video. And without further ado, I want to get into Brandon Johnson. And again, I, I think you start off with this is just a damn good football player that's played a lot of football over the last two years is going to make Oregon better, no question about it. A guy that you take a look at the numbers over the last two years, over 100 tackles, 16 tackles for a loss as a nickelback is extremely impressive. Seven sacks, two interceptions, 11 passes defended. This is the epitome of what you want in a nickel, a guy that can play around the line of scrimmage, get behind the backfield, send pressure, be, be a force in the run game, but also be somebody that can deal with tight ends, deal with slot receivers, a guy with the athleticism to be very good in coverage. He is kind of the definition of versatility, and that's exactly what you want in that nickel role. A guy like Brandon Johnson, I think, unquestionably makes his team better. And then you start looking at, one, what Oregon's done in the portal. More important, uh, Actually, let's pause that. One more thing I want to highlight an 11.9% missed tackle rate in 2023, extraordinarily low. That is something, especially from that nickel roll, that you talk about having to tackle running backs in space, having to tackle slot receivers in space, right? A lot of these targets are coming in their shorter intermediate route trees. A guy like Brandon Johnson 
comes up, makes tackles. He doesn't miss them. He doesn't allow wide receivers to extend after the catch. That's another thing I'm a massive fan of what Brandon Johnson brings to the table. Now, this is what's exciting, right? You look at this Oregon secondary room and you look at not only what the starting lineup looks like, but what the depth of this program in the back end looks like as well. You look at going to the big time, dealing with some of those offenses like Ohio State. This is an Oregon secondary that I think is absolutely loaded, right? You lose a guy like Evan Williams, you replace him with Kobe Savage coming over from Kansas State to play that strong safety role, a guy that can play in the box, can play in the deeper third. I think that's kind of a, um, with all due respect to Evan Williams, I don't think you're going to see a drop off from that position. You take a look at the boundary cornerbacks, you lose a guy like Kyrie Jackson, who very well might go in the first round of the NFL draft. You replace him with a guy like Cam Alexander from UTSA, who is a first-team all-conference guy. You have a guy like Jaleel Florence coming back, and if he stays healthy, he's going to be an elite cornerback in the Big Ten next year. Dante Manning finally showing – not finally showing, but starting to show some strides of what we thought he would be coming out of high school. You have a guy like Nico Reed, who didn't really get to play as much as I think many would like due to how good Oregon's cornerback room was, but another guy you feel good about. You have Roderick Pleasant, who's young. Ify Obadegu coming in as a true freshman, I think is has a very good chance to play early. Dakota Fields as well. You look at this cornerback room, and it's such a nice blend of experience. Guys that have played a ton of football, like Brandon Johnson, who's played over 1,600 snaps, to Sheen Johnson as well, but also some young cats that I think have the ability to really push some of the starters in this room. And I think that's what Dan Landing is looking like it. Dan Lanning is taking the Kirby smart approach. And I think it's the, obviously the best approach to take. And that is never kind of settle for, for average depth. If you have the ability to make this roster better, you do it. And then you figure out who's going to win the starting role in, in fall camp. You don't want to just go into fall camp saying, Hey, these are our starters. We're not going to have much of competition. You want that competition in spring practice in fall camp and Brandon Johnson comes and brings that. And whether Brandon Johnson wins that nickel roll from Tasheen Johnson or not, as an Oregon fan, as an Oregon coaching staff, you look at that position and say, yeah, that's a massive check heading into 2024. And I think that's what Brandon Johnson brings to the table. And I, I get it. I think a lot of Oregon fans are really hoping Jabbar Muhammad winds up in Eugene. And I still think there's a, a possibility. I think I just got a notification on my phone, Bama, Texas, and the Oregon Ducks. It sounds like Oregon is still in it for a guy like Jabbar Muhammad, but the idea I want to hammer home is Jabbar Muhammad is not a cornerback that is going to be scared off. Whether he goes to Alabama, whether he goes to Texas, he is going to have to compete for a starting spot in a, in a backfield that is very, very good. Adding Brandon Johnson to play that nickel role is not going to scare off Jabbar Muhammad. I think Oregon has just as good of a chance to land Jabbar Muhammad as if they didn't bring, 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 bring Brandon Johnson in. And at the end of the day, I mean, Brandon Johnson, experienced, has played at a high level in the Power Five. And uh, again, I don't think I, I, I hammered the idea home enough. I mean, 16 tackles for a loss, seven sacks for a nickel defender is extremely good. He's a guy that wants to get downhill, play behind the line of scrimmage, kind of provide that athletic box defender that largely I think Evan Williams was able to do. Now, they play different positions, but that value that Evan Williams had for the Oregon Ducks, I think Brandon Johnson – can largely bring that to the Oregon Ducks. There's no doubt in my mind this Oregon team gets better with a guy like Brandon Johnson, whether it's a starting caliber guy, whether it's a very quality depth piece in competition and practice. I think Oregon fans have a lot to be excited about Brandon Johnson, a guy that I've liked for the last couple of years, and Dan Landing, I mean, continuing to build this roster to be as competitive and as deep as it can be heading into spring practice, heading into fall camp in the 2024 season. Appreciate the Oregon fans rocking with the boys again. We will continue to update you guys as the Oregon commitments continue to roll in. And more importantly, next Wednesday, we got the Oregon defensive line deep dive. We're very excited to get into that. Appreciate you guys rocking with the boys again. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. And we'll talk to y'all later. Peace.